Hey, did you know Hyplet Store makes the coolest merchandise just for you? Place your order today as everything is 50% off and get completely free shipping no matter where you are. Hypletstore.com, there's a bit of everything for everyone. I'd like to ask you to leave a like on this video and join that notification squad by hitting the subscribe button. Also comment down below when you do so and we'll do our best to reply to as many of you as we possibly can. More remakes and sequels of existing films are being released today than new original movies, but even those often use the same themes over and over again, telling stories about heroes fighting powerful enemies or dark alien monsters or finding a hidden treasure and saving a pretty lady in passing. Many of those films have an interesting plot twist or an exciting new angle, which can still draw us into the movie theaters at the end of the day. However, some of those so-called original films are just a little too close to the others that have already been released and it usually doesn't take long until someone points the similarities out. So if you want to find out which movies are not as ingenious as you thought they were, then stay tuned as we give you 10 popular movies that got caught stealing from other films. Pixar's first feature-length animated movie Toy Story is one of the most popular animated movies ever, but its storyline is not as original as many believe. There is actually a children's novel called The Brave Little Toaster that was also adapted into a movie and follows the story of household appliances and other electronics that come to life and are abandoned by their new college-aged donor, Rob, and try to make it to his dorm room while struggling to overcome various obstacles on the way. While the appliances were reimagined as toys for the Toy Story series, there are several similarities between the movies, such as the seemingly inanimate objects being thrown away by their owner, and even ending up in a junkyard headed for disposal. Since many of Pixar's original staff, including director John Lasseter, also worked on The Brave Little Toaster, these parallels hardly come as a surprise, but as both films turned out to be as educational as they are entertaining, we can simply overlook the fact that they basically told the same story twice. After nearly 30 years in production, Miramax, a subsidiary of Disney at the time, finally released The Thief and the Cobbler under the title Arabian Night in North America in 1995. It was originally supposed to be released before Disney's Aladdin, but wasn't, and when watching these two movies one cannot help but notice the similarities. Both villains have a bird sidekick, many of the costumes are pretty much the same, and the villain in The Thief and the Cobbler bears a striking resemblance to Aladdin's genie. Yet both movies are seen as classic animations today, despite their many similarities. In 1991, Michael J. Fox starred as a doctor who crashes his car into a fence in a rural town in the movie Doc Hollywood. After he is sentenced to community service at a town hospital, he soon takes a liking to the old-fashioned doctor, and after he is allowed to leave the town later on in the movie, he actually decides to return to his newfound small-town home. Take away the people from this movie and you will basically end up with Disney's Cars, where Lightning McQueen is also sentenced to community service in a small town and eventually falls in love with it and trades the shallow world of California for small town life. George Lucas never claimed to have created an original story with the Star Wars saga, naming ancient archetypes as influences, a damsel in distress, a young handsome hero, a wise old wizard and an evil masked villain, all reimagined in a galaxy far, far away. Lucas named Japanese director Akira Kurosawa as another huge influence, and if you take a look at Kurosawa's samurai classic The Hidden Fortress from 1958, you will notice just how much of an influence this movie was. Lucas has often acknowledged that he had borrowed Kurosawa's idea to tell a story from the perspective of two lower and constantly bickering characters, which in the Star Wars case are the two droids but there are also several images, settings, and techniques that he more or less copied from the Hidden Fortress as well as the characters such as Jabba the Hutt, who could be Kurosawa's corpulent slave owner's cousin. You don't even have to pay too close attention to notice all the similarities, especially when watching the movies back to back. The Fast and the Furious may have become a huge success, but the story actually started out differently than we know it. Drawing its inspiration from a magazine article about import street racing in New York City, the movie script soon grew into a story of an undercover cop planted in a community of street racers who are suspected to be involved in a string of high-speed electronics truck robberies. In other words, a retelling of Catherine Bigelow's Point Break, which was released 10 years earlier and featured surfers instead of street racers. Other than that, the films are almost the same. The infiltrators get drawn into the gang's lifestyle, fall in love, and eventually have to decide where their loyalty really lies. 
1979 space horror movie Alien was Ridley Scott's commercial breakthrough that told the story of the crew of a spaceship that is attacked by a murderous alien stowaway. While the movie introduced a new age of science fiction, its plot was not really new. Since Alien was first released, it has been compared to the 1958 film It, The Terror from Beyond Space, and one producer even admitted that they watched the movie on set to avoid following it too closely and simply creating a copy. While It takes place on Mars instead of planetoid LV-426 and features a humanoid lizard instead of the xenomorph, entire scenes, sequences and even the film's finale are pretty much recreated in Alien. Because the original film drew inspiration from several classic sci-fi stories, no lawsuits were filed against the Alien creators, but that doesn't really justify basically copying another movie. Just like with Star Wars, Lucas also acknowledged the fact that the Raiders of the Lost Ark was based off the image of classic serial adventures. However, there is one film that had a lot more influence on this Indiana Jones movie than any other. Even though The Secret of the Incas starring Charlton Heston might not be a very well-known movie, Lucas has certainly watched it more than once since his hero bears a striking resemblance to Harry Steele and also uses a secret key to locate a hidden treasure. Raiders of the Lost Ark also features several other pretty obvious similarities to The Secrets of the Incas, and a costume designer on the Indiana Jones film even confirmed that they watched the 1954 movie with Charlton Heston numerous times for inspiration. But George Lucas and Steven Spielberg still have some explaining to do as to why they didn't credit the movie that had a, such a great impact on their project. The Lion King was Disney's first animated feature that wasn't based on a fairy tale or some other already existing story, yet the plot isn't actually as original as you might have thought. While Disney claims that its movie was inspired by Bambi and Hamlet, it is hard to ignore the similarities between The Lion King and the Japanese-created American cartoon series Kimba the White Lion. From the storyline to the images of a lion standing on and falling from an impressive rock formation, there are just too many similarities to make them coincidental. Early footage even shows Simba as a white lion cub and the fact that voice actor Matthew Broderick assumed that the lion kid was related to the cartoon series he had watched as a child speaks volumes as well. Disney stuck to their guns though, claiming that nothing had been stolen, as the creators hadn't even been aware of Kimba's existence and script rewrites during production eventually made it impossible to prove anything. At the end of the day, Disney was too powerful to fight for the studio behind Kimba, and so instead, they decided to simply take Disney's interest in their story as a compliment. The Incredibles tells the story of a family of four who use superpowers to save the world. As you might know, their superpowers are superhuman strength and durability, the ability to stretch like rubber, super speed, and ability to become invisible and generate force shields. Even if you haven't watched this popular 2004 Disney film, the story might sound familiar, as there is another movie about four superheroes called the Fantastic Four, who, interestingly enough, have the following powers. Superhuman strength and durability, ability to stretch like rubber, ability to generate flames and fly, and ability to be invisible and generate force shields. So the three out of four heroes of this movie share their powers with the heroes from The Incredibles, and even though his powers are not fully developed yet, we already know that baby Jack-Jack can self-combust, levitate and teleport, which makes it pretty much 4 out of 4. But even though The Incredibles hit the theaters a year before Fantastic Four was released, Disney were not the ones who came up with the original idea, as Fantastic Four is actually based on the Marvel Comics team of the same name that first appeared in comic books in America in the early 1960s. Most of you have probably never heard of the movie Parts, The Clone is Horror, but if you watch Michael Bay's The Island that was released in 2005, you will still be familiar with the dystopic science fiction tale about clones looking for freedom. In 1979's Clonus, we see a future where clones are led to believe that the Earth is in a desolate state, while they are actually being bred to serve as a source of replacement organs for the super wealthy. One clone figures out the truth, however, escapes and eventually encounters his sponsor. In the island, Michael Bay simply added Scarlett Johansson before telling exactly the same story, and unfortunately, he wasn't as lucky as Disney with The Lion King, as the original filmmakers filed a lawsuit, which was eventually settled out of court. Thank you so much for watching guys and don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you're new. Also don't forget to turn that post notification bell on so you never miss our uploads. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time.